Meet John Harper. He's a lot like other children his age, but there's one difference. John was born with a devastating genetic disease, a previously unrecognized condition that condemns him to severe social stigmatization. Fortunately, the evolution of genetic research has enabled scientists to discover that John's illness and subsequent actions are caused by a surprisingly common genetic mutation. We are talking about the discovery of the asshole gene. This journey started here in Edinburgh, where an international team of geneticists made the discovery by accident. Marcus Ross is the manager of the Edinburgh International Genetic Laboratory. What is really important about this discovery is that it changes our perspective on this group of people. Before, they were simply f bastards. Now, they're poor, sick people. For Joseph and Anne, it was shocking to discover that their only son was an asshole. Well, being a first-time mom, I, I didn't really know that it was a problem until my babysitter actually said to me, look, he's not like the other children I have had. He's being a little f and I actually want to strangle him in the bathtub. And those were her exact words. Right, yeah. Um, it's really frustrating, you know, because well, I, I can't punish him like I want to. Yeah. And I mean, that that's the worst part. I can't actually say to him that what he's doing is wrong. He, he doesn't understand it. And, you know, I can't blame him and I can't fight against it. And I just, sometimes I just feel like, I just feel like I want to run him down with my car. I really do. The implications of this discovery will affect all aspects of society. So we decided to visit Dr. Ron Baines, president of the Scottish Philosophical Association. It's probably too early to talk about this, but one way or another, this totally changes not only our present, but also our past. What if some of the most demonized people in history were just sick people? George Patton, the Emperor Nero, George Bush, Morhino, Adolf Hitler. Well, Hitler, no, he was just a, he was just an evil f But anyway, the point is, what will happen when we discover that all our politicians, lawyers, and bankers were just sick people, then we can't really blame them for what they've done. And I don't know about you, but I do want to blame them. At this point of the investigation, we can only detect the existence of the mutation rather than treat it, which is a shame. However, we have a really simple test uh, by which we can detect its existence, we offer the subject a pot of tea and a urine sample jar. And if he's an arsehole, he'll pee in the teapot. Obviously, we can do a genetic test, uh, but this one turned out to be simpler and cheaper. That comes as a welcome revelation for Michael Stevenson, who has, despite continued scepticism, fought for years to get government and society as a whole to accept his belief that this was an illness. What the f*** with that camera, will you? Some of us are trying to play. Jesus! I've, I've always known I was a sick person. I've known for years. Um, at, at last, there's a, some sort of recognition for people like me. I've been fighting hard, very hard, for, for this time to come. I've been campaigning in newspapers, we can see here, uh, right into several newspapers, including Chinese ones. Um, just to try and get some sort of recognition for my condition. I'm always cutting into queues. I like to start fights with the other customers. Um, I keep stealing my neighbor's mail and swapping them round um, parcels, wrong flats, starts all sorts of fights, it's hilarious. I mean, I can be a nice person, like when I made you that cup of tea, for instance, and I can be an arsehole, like when I spat in it. Michael is the founder of the British Arsehole Foundation, a charity designed to help sufferers like himself. He's created a petition to get disability benefits for assholes. We've always been blamed for, for this condition and the, the prejudice is still very strong in people's minds. You wouldn't believe how hard it is to get money from people. Just when you explain to them it's for helping assholes. So um, I've set up a website, um, hopefully to try and get donations, yet all I've received is abusive emails from people. Uh, no matter what happens, no matter how hard the struggle gets, I, I will always keep fighting. Right, I'm done. That's it. You can all f off now. See ya. 
Now that the cause has been discovered, what's the next step in the process of improving the quality of life for arseholes? When a discovery like this comes along, the next natural step is to try and fix the problem, to try and help these people. That's why a few months ago, we started human clinical trials. In this case, every person in this trial is an arsehole and we have to keep them all in the group. It's been an absolute nightmare. As a company, we feel we have a responsibility to help society. That's why we have collaborated with the government to help inform people. What? How many years will it take to find a cure? Are we close to a solution? I personally, and speaking only for myself, like to think that in a matter of a few decades we could have an asshole free world. What will happen to Michael now? Stop now. Come on. Hey, hey, hey. And what about John? Stop. Again. Stop. John! And what will happen to the other assholes whose faces we are not allowed to show because they refuse to sign the broadcasting rights document at the end of the interview despite having been paid? The discovery of the arsehole gene brings consequences that are many and profound. And only time will tell how this will affect us all. The one thing we can be sure of at the moment is the one thing everyone suspected since the very dawn of civilization. The world really is full of assholes.